of uh, sons become kings, not using gender, but sons become kings, which includes daughters become queens. And I'll use some scripture here. Uh, I'll just reflect on it. That'll help you to better understand what you have the capacity to become if your thinking is correct. Gen Genesis, excuse me, Galatians. I'm about to take you to the beginning of the book. Galatians chapter 4 starting in verse 1. Galatians 4, verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Even so we, when we are, were children, were in bondage under the element of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son then an heir of God through Christ. Father, we bless you, we honor you. We thank you for these precious moments that we have. We thank you for the ability to declare and articulate the truth of your word. We thank you that your kingdom has come and your will is being done in this earth realm. In spite of all that's going on around us, in spite of the coronavirus, and in spite of uh, the racial dis-ease, in spite of any sickness or disease that may be moving throughout the earth, Father, you're still God, and you're still moving, and you're still showing yourself mighty and strong. So through this message tonight, God, prove to skeptics, prove to this world that you're still operating through your extension, and that is your sons and daughters. We decree it, we declare it, it is so. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Those who are in the sanctuary, you can be seated. Those of you who are in your cars, you can do whatever you want to do because you're in your car. Um, as we've been going through scripture, uh, I was just thinking today, um, there's a lot of things that I'm getting involved in. When I say a lot of things, I'm getting involved in some things that will be helpful to mankind. So I'll be doing an interview uh, tomorrow uh, with Faith uh, Church there in Trustville. Uh, Pastor Steve will be doing an interview. I think uh, Pastor Mike Enos also will be a part of that group uh, at 3.30, about uh, 3 o'clock tomorrow, at 3 o'clock tomorrow. Then I'll be in another meeting with Pastor Potter at 5 tomorrow. So both of those will be aired. We'll send some information out uh, so that you can uh, stream in while we're doing those interviews uh, just to help to make things better. Uh, the more informed you are, the better you know how to operate and to move in times like these. You do need to be uh, well informed. I've been talking about, uh, I started last week talking about sons becoming kings, sons becoming kings. So in relationship to that, it would be daughters, if it's a female, daughters becoming queens. Sons becoming kings, daughters becoming queens. Uh, in the book of uh, John chapter 3, Nicodemus has this conversation with Jesus. Nicodemus is a ruler of the Jews, so he's very high rank in the church, but he has not been born again. He has not experienced the born again experience. So Jesus begins to explain to him because he asked the question, how can a man when he is old enter the second time in his, into his mother's womb? And Jesus told him, you must be born of water and of the spirit. That's what Jesus told Nicodemus. So Nicodemus got a better revelation because Jesus explained to him that what it was gonna take was not a re-entry into the womb, but what it was gonna take was a birthing or a baptizing in water and also a submerging in the spirit. So both are completely, you can't halfway be saved. You're totally submerged in water. You're totally submerged in the spirit. And Jesus is explaining to him, this is the uh, born again process. What it does, regardless of your age, uh, you can be 
you can be born again. Jesus was baptized at 30 years old. His ministry lasted three years. He only lasted three, about three and a half years of ministry. He got that much done in three and a half years. So what we have to understand normally um, at two, uh, as a toddler, we don't um, try to lead them so much to the Lord because the level of understanding is not there. Normally, you're in teenage years, and most people really, I gave my life to the Lord uh, as a teenager. Uh, I got away from God, but I really gave my life to the Lord as a teenager. That's the best time uh, to give your lives to the Lord. Usually, usually, um, some stray away if they're not in proper environment, but usually they do come back to the Lord and they serve God fully because of their first experience as a teenager. Some are older. I've heard of people 70 and 80 years old giving their lives to the Lord uh, for the very first time. So you're never too old to give your life to the Lord. And I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about uh, taking a seat of fellowship. I'm not talking about joining a church. I'm talking about Jesus coming into your life and transforming your life. Uh, and you now have the spirit of God living on the inside of you that enables you to walk out the will of God concerning your life. So Jesus has this conversation with Nicodemus, and after having this conversation with Nicodemus, Nicodemus as a ruler in the Jews, it doesn't matter how high up in the church you can be, it doesn't mean that you are born again. You have to have this experience. There is no other way. This is the way. Amen? So we're going to talk a little bit further. I talked through several points. I had a lot of information on Sunday. I still have a pretty good bit of information, but I'm preparing you uh, for something. So the born again and the experience starts you on a journey that you were not on prior to accepting Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. You were not on that journey. You only start that journey when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. At that point, you become a babe again, whether you're 15 or 30 or 40, 50, 80, that's when your journey in Christ starts. It doesn't start, you don't have seniority because you're 60. No, whenever you, at that point, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, that's when your journey begins. Now, I am shifting some. Uh, I'm shifting some because it's time. I am shifting much of my role that I've been operating in, and much of my role I've been operating in is to uh, help to equip people to come along and, and uh, be what God wants them to be. But I'm having, at this point, to shift roles and, uh, because uh, the part that I play in the body of Christ is important too, and I can't miss my role trying to coerce somebody into their role so I'm having to shift now into really walking out my role I'm going to get to my message just stay with me here um, I've uh, I looked at my phone just before I left home uh, and I told Lady Davis I said in the last couple of days I have been in contact through text messages and phone calls with some of the greatest uh, Christian leaders in the world and I'm just sitting there, I'm putting my shoes on. And, and I look at my phone and I see where I have made contact or someone has made contact with me. Uh, and several of them are some of the greatest Christian leaders in the world. I'm not talking about in Birmingham. I'm not even just saying the United States. I'm saying some of the greatest Christian leaders in the world. So you have to start to reflect. And you have to say, why do you have access to those type of individuals at this point in your life, nine times out of 10, you're one of those. And I'll, I'll tell you this, the way you get that kind of access is through having the spirit of a son. That's, that's how you get that type of access. You do not get that type of access to trying to be uh, what we consider as an adult. You get that type of access through the spirit of a son. So as I read to you out of Galatians chapter 4, uh, we saw in the scripture that the spirit of his son came into our hearts. 
a father can always trust, and I have a statement that I'll give, can always trust an individual who has the spirit of a son. A father can always trust those who have the spirit of a son. So most of those relationships are with kingdom fathers. They're not my age. Most of those relationships are with kingdom fathers. If we can give some service at this door out here. Uh, there is a spirit that is supposed to come upon those who have received Jesus Christ, and that is the spirit of a son based on the scripture out of Galatians chapter 4, 1 through verse 7. It is not about your performance. Fathers don't look for performance. Fathers look for heart. Fathers do not look for performance. Fathers look for heart. Now, I'm going to take you through some things that I, I think are going to be very helpful. Uh, I ended up talking about the predators uh, targeting those who have not uh, been properly fathered. That's not where I'm going to start at, but that's where I ended on Sunday. Where I want to start today uh, is uh, a son overthrows the kingdom of darkness. A son overthrows the kingdom of darkness. A son overthrows the kingdom of darkness. Just like there is a kingdom of light, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, there is a kingdom of darkness. Through the kingdom of darkness is how Satan gets his work done. So there is a kingdom of darkness. There's a kingdom of light, which is the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. But this kingdom of darkness is how Satan gets his work done. What do you mean? a son overthrows the kingdom of darkness. I have two examples of two sons in your Old Testament. What we have to do is we have to change your mentality. Uh, after today, I'll go into a couple of messages teaching you how to operate like royalty. Uh, the problem is you're, you can be too disrespectful to go before a father or a king. So when you're born again, we start shaping you, taking out that nasty attitude, that rolling of the eyes, bad posture, because all of that keeps you from being in those arenas that I talked about. You can't roll your neck in those arenas. You can't show negative body language in those arenas. So I'll start teaching you more about royalty. But what I want to do is I want to use a couple of examples that's going to help you uh, to better understand how that process goes. In the book of Esther chapter 2, and you can read that entire chapter at your leisure, but Esther has been favored by Hegai, and Hegai is the king's eunuch that was given to Esther. Esther was Hadessa. Esther was brought in as a daughter to Mordecai, but she was a biological daughter to Mordecai's uncle. So Mordecai's uncle and aunt were killed. So it, it allowed, it left Adessa, who was Esther, without a father. So Mordecai, what he done, he adopted Esther as his daughter. And he began to train Esther when he heard, and he was already training her, but when he heard that the king was no longer uh, pleased with Vestia. So now she's out, and the king is now looking in Shushan for his next queen. So they take all these women, and they bring them into Shushan, and they, they, they begin to process them for an entire year. For an entire year, Esther and many other women are being processed for an entire year. 365 is a year process. That's the reason it's in place. That'll start back up really soon because what it does, it helps to process you. 
for six months. They, they perfumed them, they cleaned them for another six months. They, done, they, done, they had certain procedures for an entire year. If you can never commit an entire year, you can never be a queen. You can never be a queen, you can never be a king if you can't commit for 365 days. So it took 365 days for her and others to go through a process. Now she found favor. She found favor with the king's eunuch. And when she's found favor, he gave her some other maids and put them in a special house. And then when it was time for her to go before the king, he gave her further instructions. What we don't understand in the body of Christ, there has to be someone that may not benefit from your advancement, but has enough wisdom to tell you how to posture yourself when you're royalty. Many of us in the body of Christ are so rebellious that our posture is not correct for advancement. So Esther is being taught by the eunuch. First she gets favor with the eunuch. Uh, what you don't understand is these great people who ascribe and favor me, it was somebody below them that favored me first. Um, under my, my late father who has passed away, he didn't know me, but some of his staff favored me. And when his staff favored me, they made sure I moved up to a place to where I was in his presence. That's how all that happened. It didn't happen where he heard me preach or he heard me perform. It was those who were in place serving him that favored me. And then they made sure that I got a chance to be in his presence. So here it is, the king's eunuch has favored Esther. Esther and all the other young ladies have an opportunity to go before the king. Each one of them were gonna have an opportunity. So they, they opened up treasury, jewelry to them and told them you can have whatever you need to go before the king. So you'll, you know, perfectly ordained or what you would call adored with uh, precious items. But the thing about Esther is she didn't indulge like the other ladies. Ladies, she was very modest. And so, and she was taught that by, listen to this, the eunuch. She was taught that. He said, listen, don't go in there bling bling like everybody else. And she went in with the proper attitude under teaching. But you don't understand that people have to teach you. If you're going to a great place, you have to be able to be taught. You have to be teachable. So she was teachable because Mordecai had given stewardship uh, over her, who was given stewardship over her, taught her. Um, you know, you're fixing to step into an arena, and this is going. This is the posture, and this is how you carry yourself. So now she's handed off to the eunuch that says, "No, don't don't put on all those gold chains when you go in. Uh, hold on on all those bracelets when you go in." So she went in without having the appearance of the others who had gone in. They would go in in the evening and they would come out the next morning. So when she went in, the king favored her. The king favored her. The king favored her. The king favored her so much that he says, I am going to put the crown on Esther's head. He favored her so much that he put the crown on her head. Now she's in position to make a difference. See, you have to understand with the things that are going on in the world, you have to be in a position to make a difference. Esther is now because the way she carried herself, because of her posture, because of the spirit of a daughter. The only way you're gonna listen is you have a spirit of a daughter. The spirit of a daughter was on her and she listened, she took heed. Now she's in a position. She is no longer a fatherless little girl. She is now Esther the queen. So she's no longer Hadessa. She is now Esther the queen. She is now in position to have impact and have influence. So what we have to understand, we can cry down here, but we can have more impact if we get there. So if you want to go from here 
to there, there's some stuff got to change about you. <laughs> there's a whole lot of, that's going to have to change about you because God is looking for somebody that he can elevate so that they can have impact and bring forth change. Stay with me. So now she's in this place. That's why we got to take you to, through uh, a process so that you better understand. You can't be acting street in the palace. You can't be acting street in the palace. You, 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 you can't be acting street. You can't be losing it and walking off and kicking things in the palace. Now, stay with me. She's gone through her process. She yielded to Mordecai. She yield, yielded to the eunuch. Now she's in a position. She walks in and she gains favor from the king and the king now wants to put the crown on her head. Well, there's a plan that's been going on to annihilate her people. Haman was going to annihilate all the Jews. Y'all catching me? See, he was going to annihilate all the Jews, but God has maneuvered a daughter through the ranks so that when that day of annihilation came, God already had someone in position to shift the future. See, the problem is, listen to me, you got to hear me. If you don't go through the process, you'll never be able to stand for your people. So now she's there and she prepares a dinner for, uh, for the king. He goes in, he's pleased. He tells her that whatever your request is, I will give it to you. She requests that her people not be annihilated. This is in Esther chapter seven. So she stops the annihilation of her people. She started out as an orphan who yielded to Mordecai, who also prepared her to go into the palace. She yielded her thinking now to the eunuch that prepared her to go before the king. And now she's before the king and she is prepared to be the deliverer for her people. Now I'm sure as uh, Hadessa, she didn't know how to carry herself like royalty. So it took a process. Moving up, it took her yielding and respecting as she was moving up because she didn't know respect for a king because she didn't know she was a queen at the time. The problem is, Unless we teach you correctly, you don't have a clue who you are and you don't have a clue of where you're going and you try to figure out why certain demands are on you. Certain demands are on you because God has a plan for you to take you somewhere that is going to take uh, a little bit more self-control than what you have right now. So stay with me here. Stay with me here. So you, Esther, now you're reading it from a different perspective. Esther, Esther didn't work at a Fortune 500 company. Esther was into, entered into royalty. And you got to start thinking like that. It was a kingdom. There was a king. She became the queen because it was a king. So if you don't think like that, then you won't go through the process. God wants to take you uh, further than give you the next promotion on your job. God wants to take you further Yes, yes, he does. Yes, he does. Those of you, he wants to take you further. He's got a plan for you that's greater than the plan that you have for yourself. Every son or daughter, every person that has been born again, God has a plan. And if you don't abide by that plan, your people will be lost. Your bloodline, your family will be lost. God needs you to go through the process. I said, God needs you to go through the process. Now, let's, let's go to, a, that, that was a daughter. That was a daughter. That was a daughter. Let's go to a son. David, David was a son. We have no uh, knowledge of a father, of, of a mother, but we know he had a father. Now, where his father um, thought of him and how he thought of him we're not sure because seven brothers passed by and he was the eighth one before the anointing flowed on him. But what happened in 1 Samuel chapter 19 is that he showed up to bring food and he slayed a giant. He showed up to bring food and slayed a giant. Now, when he showed up to, to uh, bring food, he is not disciplined yet. 
all he knows is I defeated every wild thing that came against me. When the bear came against me, I slayed him. When the lion came against me, I slayed him. He said, this uncircumcised Philistine is no different than what I've been fighting in the streets. So God, God can take a street boy who understands that if I yield to the process, I can become a king. David is recorded to, as one of the greatest kings of the Old Testament. And he came out of the woods. He came out of the streets. He came from a low place. He came from a place that they don't even name his mother. Some scholars think his mother may have been a prostitute or she may have been some woman of the night. That's why they don't talk about her. All we know is about his father. When God has a plan for you and you understand that you're born again as a son or a daughter, God can take you from out back and do something great with you. You got to understand it. Most of you, you got to understand the only reason you have come under the sound of my voice is that God's got a plan for your life and you need to stop acting like where you came from long enough to get to where you're going. So David, what he does, he, he slays Goliath and after he slays Goliath in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, uh, King Saul does not, because he's the replacement. David is the replacement for King Saul. He does not allow David to go back home. From that day, he brings David into the palace. From that day. Now, he doesn't, Saul, King Saul doesn't train David. It's his son, Jonathan, that takes up uh, time and friendship and love towards David. And so he, Jonathan was in the house. Jonathan understood royalty. David was just coming out of his daddy's backyard. He was just taking his brother's lunch. So Jonathan was in the house. So what Jonathan done, because he loved David, he took his robe off and he put it on David. He said, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna teach you, David, how to operate in royalty. Even though you're not king, and I should have been next in line to be the king, I'm going to dress you so that you can fulfill destiny. There are people already in place, if you can get your act together, there are people already in place for where God wants to take you. So Jonathan was there because uh, God knew that King Saul was going to freak out when he realized that David was getting more glory than he was. Saul has slayed his thousands, but David has slayed his tens of thousands. That's what the people start singing. So Solomon, King Solomon got upset when they started singing more about David than what they were about him. But Jonathan, who was Saul's son, did not get upset because God had ordained him because David was a son. God had ordained him to make sure that David was okay. So one time David had to flee from the palace because Saul, his dad was trying to kill David. So what they done, they put a plan together. I'm going to shoot an arrow. You go hide and I'm going to bring you food. I'm going to take care of you while you're in the wilderness because I'm not going to let you die because you're a son and there's too much purpose in you that I'm not going to let you die. I want to tell some of y'all, if you realize what God is doing in and through your life and allow the process to really take place, that you can't die before you fulfill the will of God for your life. So it doesn't matter who is trying to stop you. Their own blood will work for you just to get you to your destination. Y'all need to read the word because you got to learn how to understand royalty. And in your Bible, Jonathan, who was the son of King Saul, worked against his father to make sure the seed that was in David came to the throne. So you need to get ready. That's why you got to start shifting. That's why I am shifting. I am shifting. I started shifting last week and I said, okay, God, I am ready because there's a message on the inside of me that every people that felt like they were in captivity need to get this word. I am so sure of what I'm preaching that ain't a devil in hell can make me shut up right now. I've had so many technical problems since I've been teaching on the kingdom because some people need to realize 
recognize all the hell you've been through is because you're true sons and daughters. And when you're true sons and daughters, you look for somebody that'll help you through your process. Help me to get rid of this bad behavior that I have. Get, help me to get rid of this stuff I learned when I was in the projects or when I was in the trailer or when I was in that low income housing because I know that something on the inside of me is a king or a queen and, and I know I am not going to die until I become all that God wants me to be. So it doesn't matter how low you come from, you just got to look out for those that God has strategically put in place to make sure that you get to your destination. You can't wear that attitude in this season of your life. You got to take that stuff off and you got to listen because you really don't know how high you're going. So you have to get in touch with somebody or be favored by somebody that knows how to take you where you're going. You know, you don't know. No, you don't. Don't think you know. You can't Google enough for where you're going. You, no, 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 you can't. You may think you can, but for the place you're going, you can't Google it all. So humble yourself so you can be taught. And I want to talk about Refresh Family Church right now. If you're a part of it, you ain't got a clue of where we're going. Stop trying to Google it. Stop trying to figure it out. Yield to everything I tell you because you're not ready yet. And let me take you through the process so that when you get there, you don't blow it in one day. So you have Esther and you have David. And both came from a low childhood and both went into the palace. Esther became a queen. She was once Hadessa, a daughter who had no mother or father, but she winded up being the queen. David was a son. They don't even mention his mother. But he became the second king over God's people. Listen to this. Father God relates best to sons. When I say sons, I'm talking about daughters too. Father God relates best to son. He doesn't, rebate, uh, he doesn't relate to titles. He relates best to the spirit of a son. That's what he relates it best to. How, how can you say that? I know from my own upbringing. I know from what I've seen in my own life. I know from reading my Bible, he related best to Jesus because Jesus was his son. So keep that. And what you see, he is relating to sons and daughters. He said, I will raise up one from among you to lead you. For those who think that your leader is another race, that is not the truth. Your leader has been raised up from among you. David was raised up from among them. Esther was raised up from among them. In this arena, the kingdom arena, those who are born again, God will raise up one from the pews of your Christianity. Let's change that. Your citizenship. Because Christianity, that word is a downgrade to who you really are. Because it was spoken as a derogatory term for who you are. They were criticizing that they were like Jesus. So it was said out of an attitude that didn't promote what God wanted to do in you. Stay with me. Sonship brings you into your royal lineage. Sonship brings you into the royal lineage. It's when you are born again as a son or daughter, it is now shifting you out of poverty. So my daddy's devils, my mama's weaknesses didn't transfer over. So my born again experience, what it was for, it was to shift me out of the curse that was on my bloodline. It was to shift me out of all the satanic attack that was coming down on my daddy's house. When I got born again, it shifted me into a royal bloodline or into a royal lineage. It happened to David, it happened to Esther, and it's gonna happen to you. So in order for you to fulfill destiny through the receiving of Jesus Christ, he shifts you over into the blessing of Abraham. And Abraham had, he was not a king, but the Lord promised him king 
beatings will come from you. Now, here it is. Here it is. Here, here's his wife who was ah, barren. Sarah was barren. But God promised Abraham he would bring kings out of him and promised Sarah that he would bring kings out of them. God doesn't go back on his promises. So if, if that is the case and Jesus Christ, the born again experience, connects us as the seed of Abraham, why not just go ahead and be a king or a queen? So if I'm connected and God made a promise to Abraham thousands of years ago and David is a sign of that promise, he is part of the lineage of that promise that kings will come forth from Abraham and Sarah. Well, when I receive Jesus Christ, that same promise that was on Abraham is now on my life. So as I grow up and I allow men and women that God has put in my life to teach me how to walk in royalty, I I am, I am now becoming the king that God attended me to be. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't mess it up right now. You're under the right voice. You're in the right place. You're, why would you mess it up now? God's ready to take you somewhere. I don't care how much has been going on with your people. It's when you get into office. It's when you have a voice. It's when you can fix a meal and the king shows up or the queen shows up that you can make a difference. I'm telling you right now, this is the strategy of God. This is a strategy of the kingdom. I'm telling you, God wants to raise you up. God wants to clean you up. And God wants to stand you up so that you can represent a people that don't have a voice without you. Somebody better get a revelation of what I'm saying today. Uh, some of you may not represent our entire people, but you got to represent your family. Why in the world you think you got in here to hear my voice? Are you streaming in to hear my voice because if you don't grow up if we don't mentor you your family will go to hell but I believe since you're under the sound of my voice God is now going to change he's shifting you you are the answer for your family you are the deliverer for your family stop underestimating stop fighting the process and allow yourself to be raised up to save your family Sonship brings you into the royal lineage. It'll change the way you walk. Next time you show up uh, for family reunion, union still uh, practicing social distancing, you're not going to walk like everybody else is walking. When you show up, you're going to be different. When you show up, they're going to start asking questions. When you show up, they may start talking about you for a little while. But when you show up, things gonna start shifting. And, and after a while, they gonna realize that you are their deliverer. I wanna tell you, Joseph, he, he went through a process. He was, he was so, he was stripped of his coat. He was thrown in a pit, slow into slavery. But at the end of the day, because he understood, I got to be in the palace. I got to think differently because I got to save my people. What the devil meant for evil or what you meant for evil, God has turned that thing around for my good. Everybody that sold me out, everybody that betrayed me, all you've done is set me up so I can get you out of that pit, get you out of that bad place at some point in your life. So I don't hold it against you because royal people, we don't have to hold anything against anybody because we know we're going to have to deliver those who can against us. So here it is. Joseph had to deliver all of his brothers or they were going to stop. Had to deliver his father or he was going to stop. I came to tell somebody, if you're a son or a daughter and in Jesus Christ, we have just shifted you into your royal lineage and get ready over the next year. We're going to grow you up and you're going to become the greatest deliverer to your bloodline that this world has ever seen. My God, I'm telling you, hear me, hear me. We all have to be processed. There are rough edges that have to come off of us because when we get to that place where God wants us to have a voice, we can't act like we did in the streets. So we got to get that off of you. 
because where you're going, you're going to be able to de deliver your homies in the streets. But you got to change. They may talk about you first, but you're coming back as a deliverer to the street. Everything you were bound by, it, chalk it up, baby. You're going to be a deliverer to whatever you were bound by, but God has to clean you up. So when you walk back in, you don't look why, like where you've been. And if you don't look why, like where you've been, you give hope to those who are still there. They start thinking, if you can come up, I can come up. If you can get free, I can get free. Then they say, how did you get free? You tell them how you got free. You tell them how you got past your daddy's devils. You tell them how you got past your mama's devil. You got it, how you got past slavery. How you got past low self-esteem. How you got past all the demons that wanted to keep you down. They can't tell where you've been. They don't even smell smoke in your coat. I'm telling you, God's gonna bring you out and they got gonna be able to tell that you've been through the furnace. Somebody better hear me up in here. Let, let, me, let me help you. When, when, I, when I ask a person to do something, hear me. When I ask a person to do something, I'm looking into their eyes to see what their eyes are saying. I know what their mouth is saying, but I'm looking into their eyes. I'm watching their body language, and I'm wondering, are you going to have the posture so I can take you um, uh, to, into a, the arena with greater kings? Or do you still have the posture that if I ever took you there, you will never get a chance to go back again? There were, there were women, there were daughters who were there with Esther that never got a chance to go back in to see the king. They never, Sasha, they never went in again. They were positioned in a house, but they never got a chance to go back in again. Do you know that if you have an impact, they won't forget your name? And the only way that Esther was called back to the king, he had to know her name. Who Are you going to have enough impact in somebody's life that they will never forget your name? Because if they forget your name, something about you that did not impact them. But if they can remember your name, when you leave the room, they can remember your name. When you leave the room, they're asking, bring them back again. There's something about them that I like. Bring them back. And the king kept calling for her to come back. Esther, come Come back, ask to 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 come back until he put a crown on her head. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for my crown. I, I have come from being a son. I am ready now to be a king. There's somebody waiting to put a crown on every son and daughter's head. You got to get yourself ready. Oh, Refresh Family Church is. It's a place that we prune you, that we prepare you for the royal place that God wants to take you. Lay your hands on your chest. Tell yourself, I am royalty. treat you like that no more because when you walk in you walk in like you're royalty I make other people feel good when I walk in a room why because when I walk in a room I am sure of myself and the room had to shift and change because I was a son now I am a king I had to start you off as sons and daughters but we're gonna end up as kings and queens getting you ready to suffer. We're getting you ready to reign. You got to understand this process because it gets you ready to reign. And God has put you in this earth. The reason you weren't a stillborn, the reason you weren't aborted is because God wants you to reign. Well, we got to get you ready to reign. I don't care what your background has been. Let us take you through the process. There's a queen on the inside of you. There's a king on the inside of you. And the people you come in contact will pull out your potential. We're gonna start a process. 
We're going to start catching these young kids, especially these young boys, very early before the streets try to determine who they are. We're going to determine who they are. So we're going to put them in a process, and we're going to start teaching them royalty. We're going to teach them how to how to carry themselves. I got this, uh, this, this program that I'm going to call, start. It's called Suits. And, and what you don't understand, that we're going to raise up some boys that understand that they're royalty. And you're not going to have to tell them to pull their pants up. And you're not going to have to tell them how to walk in the posture. Because we're going to teach them how to walk like they're in royalty. We're going to take these young women and we're going to prove to this world that there's royalty in the body of Christ and the kingdom of God. They're not going to walk around with their heads down. They're not going to be shamed when they walk into a room. When they walk into a room, I'm telling you, their gowns will take the attention of the whole room. Have you got to that place that when you walk into a room, your head is not down, your countenance is not dark, but you are now walking in what God ordained somebody. Give God the praise. I am royalty. 